Bible study. Thank you, praise God, for those of you in the building, as well as those who are joining us online. So let me get my phone going up. Hope everybody had a wonderful day today. Uh, for those who come to the church, you all know we have fasting from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Wednesday. So I hope you guys had a great day of fasting. And don't forget, we're also picking another day to, pa- to fast from whatever you want, social media, TV, from the same time, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Amen. As always, it is my prayer that during our time together that something will be said or done to encourage you in your faith walk. And if you don't know Jesus, it is our prayer that you will come him, come to know him on tonight. Uh, this Saturday, my wife and I were looking forward to meeting uh, with Mary and engaged couples. So for those who signed up for that, we're looking forward to seeing you this Saturday. Also, the celebration of the life of our very own Patrick is going to be on the 20th uh, this Sunday. Amen. Uh, 2 p.m. at 525 North Lafayette in Griffith, Indiana. Once again, that is the 20th at 2 p.m. The address is 525 North Lafayette in Griffith, Indiana. Him and his family during the time of loss. Um, so yeah, it's very difficult to even think about you know, preparing for that. You know, it's not gonna be the same. Not seeing him back on that door. Amen. He became over the years a staple at the back door. You know, as an usher and security. So praying for not just his family but his church family as well as we go through this difficult time. We are continuing our series for this month called Confirmation confirmation. Now, we understand that God gives us clarity so that we can know and he gives us confirmation so that we can be sure. Let me say it again. God gives us clarity so that we can know and he gives us confirmation so that we can be sure. Now, a confirmation provides proof that something Baby, is true. Your mic got some static in it. One, two, three. Okay, so we're continuing our series, Confirmation. We understand that God gives us clarity so that we can know, and he gives us confirmation so that we can be sure. Now, a confirmation provides proof that something is true. Let's look at our scripture from Sunday, uh, Acts 23 and 11. Uh, Acts 23, 11 in the Amplified Bible. On the following night, the Lord stood near Paul and said, Be brave, for as you have solemnly and faithfully witnessed about me in Jerusalem, so must you go testify in Rome. Okay, so we understand that God gave Paul clear instructions regarding what he must do. Mm -hmm. He didn't say you might. He didn't say if you felt like it. He said you must go to Rome. And after God gave him clarity, he later gave him a confirmation. So Paul knew what he was supposed to do, and he was sure about it. Once we know and we are sure about what God wants us to do, there should be no more debate. After God's made you clear and given you confirmation, the debate should be over. Now we need to surrender to what God is saying. Is there anybody besides me who's fought against what God was saying as it pertains to your life? Amen. For whatever reason, maybe it would be fear, insecurity, or what have you. But once God's made you clear and gave you confirmation, then we need to surrender to what God is saying. God told me that we need to, by faith, lean into what God is saying. Mm-hmm. Not push away from it, but lean into it. God, you are saying this. I want to now lean into it. I want to pursue it with everything I have. My time, my money, my resources. I want to give my all to that which you are saying. And listen, you can't let people talk you out of what you know that God said you must do. Amen. Because it may sound foolish to other people because God didn't tell them to do it. Mm-hmm. So as you begin to tell people what God's told you you must do, you can't let them tell you it don't take all that. 
you know, slow down, you're working too hard, you need to rest. They say things like, if I were you, I would do this. But the truth of the matter is, you're not me. Mm -hmm. So we can't let people talk us out of doing what we know that God has clearly told us to do, and he's given us confirmation about it. Let's see an example in Matthew 16. Matthew 16, uh, verses 21 through 23. When God has made you clear and given you confirmation, you have to go for it. Amen. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples clearly that he must go to Jerusalem. That he might go to Jerusalem. That he must. He said, he told them clearly, this is something I must do. Keep reading. And endure many things at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, Sanhedrin Jewish high court, and be killed and be raised from death to life on the third day. Now, remember we talked about Sunday, how when God gives you that thing you must do, you have to go through a storm. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I must go to Jerusalem. And like Paul, he knew full well everything he was about to endure. But he was not going to let the storm or what he had to go through stop him from doing what God wants him to do. But look at how, if you're not careful, how people can try to talk you out of what you know God told you you must do. Look at what Peter said in verse 22. Peter took him aside to speak to him privately and began reprimanding him, saying, my God forbid it. This will never happen to you. Wait a minute now. <laughs> Jesus told him, God said, I must do uh -huh. this. I got to go through a storm, but this is something I must do. Now, Peter said, no, 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 this can't happen. Mm -hmm. Read verse 23. But Jesus turned to him, said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are not setting your mind on things of God, but things of man. He said, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> now, he wasn't Jesus. calling Peter Satan, but he knew that Satan was talking through mm -hmm. Peter. Because what he was saying was not the will of God. Mm -hmm. He says, you are a stumbling block for me. So in other words, if I listen to what you're saying, you're going to hinder me from doing what God told me I must do. Mm -hmm. You better be careful once again who you allow to influence you and speak into your life as it pertains to what you know that God said you must do. Because if you don't recognize, like Peter, they can become a stumbling block for you. Mm -hmm. He said, Peter, you're more concerned about the things of man and not the things of God. Look at St. John 4. St. John 4, verses 31 through 34, and we're talking about leaning into it. I mean, giving your all, giving your best to what God's called you to do. But look at what Jesus said in verse 31. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus to have a meal, saying, Rabbi, teacher, eat. <clears throat> but he told them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, has anyone brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to completely finish his work. He said, listen, in other words, that was good. Deep. what sustains me, yeah. what fulfills yes, me God. is completely finishing the work that God told me yes. I must do. That's amazing. See, the Bible says that man mm -hmm. should not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Jesus says, I find fulfillment, sustainment, purpose mm -hmm. in completely finishing what God told me to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, he leaned into that. See, I'll say this, and you can attest to it. Everything that we have by way of blessings has come from us committing to what God called us to do. Amen. And it's not, it's not just lip service because, see, sometimes we could talk the talk but not walk the walk. Mm -hmm. If you're not making the necessary sacrifices, if you're not going through the storm, and we talked about the storm being self-discipline, mm -hmm. self-denial, being ridiculed, being talked about. Jesus said, I must go to Jerusalem. They're going to mistreat me. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be willing to lean all the way into it. And it's scary. Can you imagine... Paul last week, knowing he was going through a storm, 
but still had to go. Jesus knew he had to go to Jerusalem, knew everything. Can you imagine knowing you're going to get jumped on wow. and beat and ultimately kill and still have to go? Remember, Jesus said, look, he said, if there's any way possible, I'm telling you. let this not have to be. He said, but nevertheless, let your will be done. So all of our blessings have come from us totally committing to what God wants us to do. See, the very thing we're running from is the very thing God wants to use to bless us. Amen. It may not seem like a blessing right away because all we see is the storm. Mm -hmm. What we got to go through, what we got to give up, what people are going to say. But we're going to see in the scriptures that Jesus had to go through to do what God wanted him to do and get what God wanted him to have. He had to go through to get to. He had to go through to get through. Get to. Yeah. Look at Matthew 16, 33. But first and most importantly, seek, aim at, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God. And all these things will be given unto you also. So it says, seek the kingdom of God, not our agenda not what people think we should, not what mm -hmm. coaches say that we should do, but seek first his kingdom, yes, God. his will, his purpose for our lives. He said, and all these things will be added unto you. See, everybody wants to be blessed. Everybody wants to be prosperous, but not everybody wants to do the will. Yeah. Because in order to do God's will, we have to deny ourselves. Mm -hmm. We have to deny, deny our will so that his will can be done. Amen. You want to say something? Mm -hmm. And so that, that's the difficult part, you know, because the Bible talks about how we have to die to ourselves. Yeah. And when we die to ourselves, that's when we can truly come alive in God, his power, his grace, his favor. Yeah. He said, seek first his kingdom, his righteousness, his way of doing things, and all these things will be added unto you. But let me say this. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. It's not easy at all. Even when you're clear about what God wants you to do, the fact that we have to deny ourselves and go through the storm, mm -hmm. it is not easy. But look at Philippians 3, verses 13 through 15. Philippians 3, 13 through 15. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider that I have made it on my own yet. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. Paul said, I don't know everything, mm -hmm. but I realize I cannot allow my past to hold me hostage. Mm -hmm. I got to forget about That's those God. things that happened in the past. Things I can't undo, I can't control. Yeah. They've happened. I have to leave the past That's in God. the past. Look at what he said in verse 14. I press on towards the goal to win the heavenly prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. He has to do what? He has to press. press. There is a press that has to take place in us getting beyond ourselves, getting beyond what people are saying, getting beyond situations and circumstances. We have to press to get what God is taking us. Amen. We have to press to do the things that God said we must do. Read verse 15. All of us who are mature, pursuing spiritual perfection, should have this attitude. This should be the attitude for all of us who are pursuing spiritual perfection. We have to press. We can't just give up because Amen. things become difficult or hard or somebody closes the door in our face. Amen. We have to, like Paul, we have to press. Yes. And this should be the mindset of those of us who are spiritually mature. I told you all before, too many times we take no for an answer as it pertains to what God said we must do. Amen. If God said you must do it, you can't just take no for an answer. Amen. You know, you got to find a way to get it done because you must do it. So you got to press. You got to find a way. How many of you know God will create a way? Amen. If you just press. Amen. It says, and if any respect, in, in any respect, you have a different attitude than to God. Well, that too. That to God will make clear to you. Read that again for me, please. I need my glasses. And if, and if in any respect you have a different attitude 
that too God will make clear to you. He says, so if you don't have this attitude of pressing, he said, you're not clear. Mm -hmm. You need clarity. Yeah. You need clarity regarding the fact that if you want to get what God has for you, you have to press. The Bible said the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. Mm -hmm. Paul said you got to press. You got to press past your fears, press past your frustration, press past fatigue. How many of y'all just get tired sometimes? Amen. You know, I'm just physically tired. Mm -hmm. But when you are pressing towards the mark, you have to press past fatigue. Mm -hmm. And I'm a proponent for getting rest. But sometimes you have to sacrifice things to get where you are going. Now, we learned that we have to press uh, because on Sunday we talked about when we understand what we must do in God, we have to also accept the fact that storms are going to come. Mm -hmm. And so when Paul ran to the storm, he had to lighten the load of his ship mm -hmm. to ensure that he was going to make it where he was going to make it. Amen. As we're moving towards the mark, as we're moving towards that what God wants us to do, we have to discern the people and things that are hindering us from getting where God wants us to go. Look at Hebrews 12, and I'm almost done. We'll be done pretty early tonight. Hebrews 12, verses 1 through 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, who by faith have testified to the truth of God's absolute faithfulness. So he said, he said, we have a witness, a great cloud of witness who have been our example to show us that we can do this. Mm -hmm. See, oftentimes we say, ain't nobody living holy. Jesus ain't nobody did. living right. You know, he said, we have a great cloud of witnesses mm -hmm. who testify mm -hmm. that we can do and be all that God said we can do and be. What did it say? Stripping off every unnecessary weight and the sin which so easily and cleverly entangles us. Let us run with endurance and active persistence the race that is set before us. Jesus said his meat is to complete mm -hmm. what God told him to do. Yep. And so here it is, it's saying, because they got, we got this testimony, people mm -hmm. look, they say, if you want to do what we've done, if you want to follow in Jesus' step, mm -hmm. he said you have to strip off every unnecessary mm -hmm. weight and sin which so easily and cleverly entangles us. I like that word cleverly because sometimes we don't even know the things that mm -hmm. are binding us up. That's right. You know, some things we didn't go, okay. So it said cast aside every sin and weight. So there's some things that bind us up that are not necessarily sin, mm -hmm. but they become weights. The Bible says that all things are not unlawful, but all things are not expedient if it brings us into bondage. So there are some things that are not necessarily sinful, but they're slowing us up. Mm -hmm. How many of y'all know social media can slow you up? Amen. How many of y'all know all binge watching Netflix, that stuff can slow you up? <laughs> Anything that can preoccupy, or any person mm -hmm. that can preoccupy your time and your energy to a point where you don't have enough left to do what God wants you to do. Mm -hmm. So he said, cast aside every sin, every weight that so easily besets us so that we can run the race. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a purpose. We all have a leg of the race to run. There is something that we must do. And if we want to do it, we have to lay aside those sins and those weights. Now, <clears throat> you all know that when we talk about us or our whole self, we talk about spirit, soul, and body. Right? That's who we are. And so we have to ask ourselves, what are the things and people that are holding me back, slowing me down spiritually? Amen. Because... I got to do what God told me to do. So spiritually, what is interfering with me and my relationship with God? Me doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. We have to identify that. You can say something? No. And then we have to ask ourselves regarding our soul. You know, what things and people are affecting our mental health? I told you all on Sunday, you know, certain movies and music can affect your mood. You know, if you're watching stuff that's depressing and negative, I mean, that can really impact your mental health. Amen. If you're hanging around people who are always negative, who have a bad energy, all those things can affect your mental health. And then, last but not least, from a physical standpoint, 
what sins and weights are we carrying regarding our physical health? Mm -hmm. You know, what are the things that we have to cast aside so that we can be the most healthiest people that we can be? And so we have to think about that. You know, if you want to run your race, if you want to complete what God wants you to do, you have to begin to take these things seriously. Mm -hmm. It's saying for those who are spiritually mature, you have to have a certain mindset. Yeah. You have to be willing to press. And I'm going to tell you all, those who, those who do not press will be stuck. Amen. Most of the time when we get stuck is because we're not willing to press through mm -hmm. what we're going through. I like that. That's good. We have to press through what we're going through. Why? Because we have to get there. We got it. Come on, is there anybody watching in the building that know what God told you to do and you just lean into it? I mean, you're giving everything you have, once again, your money, your resources, your time. People say, Pastor, you leave work, you this, you that, because I'm leaning into yeah, it. you got it. I, I got to do it. I mean, I get tired sometimes, but optional. it must be done. Yeah. And guess what? That's the only way you're going to see fruit. That's right. That's the only way because, see, we, I am so far beyond just talk. Mm -hmm. I want to see manifestation. Amen. I want to see fruit. And if I believe the word of God is true, and it is, the question is, why am, why am I and why are we not seeing the fruit? That's right. It's because there are some things we have to cast aside. Mm -hmm. Once again, it may not, you might not be in sin, but it may be a weight, something, or someone that's preventing you from running the race that God has before you. I remember you preached a message uh, once about getting down broken pieces. Man, and so leaning into it, whatever you got to do, what, <laughs> what, whatever sacrifices you have to make, um, we got to get there. You going whether you you if God said it to be so, um, you you gotta go. You 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 must go. It's not optional. You might go in the belly of a fish, but you well, going. I, I was gonna say, and, and this, that's a, that's a point you're making, and I do believe in free will. Mm -hmm. You know, is it possible that Jonah, if he had not repented, could he have died in the well? Very possible. So I believe that God created time and space in that well for Jonah to get his mind right. Yeah. Remember the prodigal son? It said he was in that pig pen, and guess what? He came to himself. Yeah. At some point, we have to change our minds and come into agreement with what God has said. So when, I, so when I say lean in, it's like, you know what, God? I'm all in. Uh -huh. You know, when you're talking with somebody, and they're doing this, and they're, living about, they're not really engaged. Uh -huh. When you lean in... Yeah. Look, you have my undivided attention. Yeah. Whatever you want me to do, I'm ready to go. Listen. So I don't, I don't fully believe that because I believe that we can decide not to do what God wants us to do. Mm -hmm. He's going to do everything he can, yeah. whether it be with a storm, with a well, with a pig pen. Look, even now, think about this. Even now, some of the stuff we have been through was not to kill us, but for us to come to, come to, come ourselves. to ourselves. And because of God's grace and his mercy, he continues to do that. But then Paul said, should we continue to sin that God's grace may well, abound? No. He said, don't do that. Right, because it might run out. And who, who knows? We don't know. The, the thing about it is is this, if if online in the house, if you saved, we know what it's like for God to give us that middle space to make up, get our man right. And and for me, it's life or death in that space. And God is saying, either you're going to do it the way I said do it, and if you don't, this is a consequence. I mean, oftentimes God makes it very clear to us. You might not know the full thing. But God, you know if you if you and I know if if you save you got the Holy Spirit. So so God will tell us in that middle space where we kicking and screaming, I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it, God, what about why I gotta do it? God is like, okay, what Pastor's talking about, you you, you can or not. But God gives us time and space to think about it. And in real life, I believe we've had those experiences. Well, think about this, think about this, and let's be real. The number of believers who have left, not necessarily prematurely, but without fulfilling Finish, the purpose. Without finishing the work. I, I really believe that our world is partially in the condition it is now because Absolutely. we as a church 
have not been fully doing what we're supposed to do. I agree. The Bible said when the righteous are silent, the, the wicked, wicked will rule. rule. And so I think we've gotten so distracted, we've gotten so caught up in the muck and the mire where we, we've lost our, our desire to push, mm -hmm. you know, push through stuff. And it's like, you know, praying through stuff. It's like now we have this idea of just, just giving up mm -hmm. and not really fighting a good fight of faith. Let's read the second part. I forgot this part. Uh, verse 2. Looking away from all that will distract us and focusing our eyes on Jesus. It says, so anything or anybody that would distract you or cause you to lose focus, look away from that. Mm -hmm. You want to keep your eyes on Jesus. Why? who is the author and perfecter of faith, the first incentive for our belief and the one who brings our faith to maturity, who for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him endured the cross, disregarding the shame and set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Oh, let's, let's stop there. I want to just say this mm -hmm. because it says, who for the joy of accomplishing his goal did what? S it says he, he endured what? He, he endured uh, He endured the cross. cross. So yeah. he had a goal, I don't know what something he must do, and he said to accomplish that goal, he had to endure some mm -hmm, stuff. Mm -hmm. He had to go through some stuff. So it was like, even though he saw the cross, he saw the storm, he saw behind it. Mm -hmm. See, because what so God I mean. said you must do is behind the storm. Yeah. And I so, was behind that storm. Huh? He saw me. <laughs> it was behind the storm. Right. And so, so he had to look beyond everything he had to go through and see what God told him mm -hmm. must happen. Mm -hmm. That's good. That, that's amazing. Because God said this must happen, but you're in a storm. Mm -hmm. Jesus said for the joy that was beyond the storm, yeah, yeah, yeah. he endured. He pressed his way, and it says, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. God reinstated him to his rightful place, but he must have came down here and died for our sins. He endured the cross. Yeah. It says, revealing his deity, his authority, and I like this, and accomplished the, the, completion. Accomplish, the completion of, of his, work. his work. Yes, He did what he was supposed to do. But he had to do what? He had to endure. He had to endure. He had to endure. I hope y'all getting this on tonight. I mean, you, 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 you heard what you must do. Mm. You may be going through a storm. You may be on a cross right now. But there should be joy on, on what's coming on the other end of the storm. And if we could see that, if we could see that joy on the other side of the storm, perhaps we can press. Perhaps we could really lean in. If you could think about... Um, the benefit in accomplishing the goal called going through the storm, who it might help, who it might save, who it might deliver, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Who might get set free? Then maybe, maybe we'll be more willing to sacrifice whatever fears we have or, or whatever worthlessness we might be entertaining um, and press anyway. Press anyway. The thing about it is, God, if we're willing, God is going to provide a way for us to get through the storm. Now, if, if we really know that, like Jesus, we can go through the storm with joy mm -hmm. because we know what's coming. We know what's coming. But when we don't fully believe what God has said, we go through the storm and we're depressed. Mm -hmm. We're murmuring. Why? Because yeah. we can't see beyond the storm. Look at my life. Look at what I'm going through. It's just a moment. Yeah. It's, it's just a, a tiny snapshot or a preview of what God's about to do. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, can we, can we be clear about what God is saying, receive confirmation, go through the storm, and still have joy knowing what God said was going to happen, mm -hmm. it must happen. Now, you talked about Paul. They made it to the shore, but on broken pieces. Broken but guess what? Pieces. They made it they with made God. It. They went through the storm, and guess what? God they made it. There. There's some people watching right now, and you've been through the storm. Yes. And you, you've been through the rain, and guess what? You made it by the grace of God. Yes. 
because he has a call and a purpose for your life. And the same God that brought you through that storm, guess what? We'll bring you to this storm and the next storm. Because listen, as you progress through this life, you're going to experience storm after storm after storm. And the hope is every storm builds your faith yeah. to the point where like Christ, you can have joy. It comes to storm, but I got joy. Why? Because I know by faith I'm coming out. Amen. I know that all things are going to work together for my good because I love God okay. and I've been called according to his purpose. That's the kind of faith I want to have. Mm. Where I could take God at his word in spite of what's going on and still believe God Amen. and still have joy. Is there anybody going through the storm but you still got joy? Mm. Not joy in the storm, but joy in what comes after the storm. Yeah. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it's, it's um, fascinating to me just talking about storms because what I realized, what you said is if you, you go through one storm, here come another, here come another one, eventually you, you, you learn how to go through the storm with joy. But here's, the, here's what I, for me, um, my storms, I don't always get these real big gigantic ones. It's like little ones and little ones and little ones and little ones. And sometimes it builds my faith for the thing that might be much larger than what I've been doing called. Um, I, and the way I can relate to going through a storm is just being obedient, right, to God in the space that you're challenged. I'm sure Jesus was, I mean, listen, for him to be sweat, be, he be sweating tears, I mean, sweating blood, that, that's some real stuff. That's real anguish. That's real God, I really don't want to have to do this, man, but I'll do it. I'll do it because you want me to. So, so if, if in the process, if we could somehow figure out how in the, what we might deem smaller things, smaller storms to obey him, I mean, something like pay for the person's groceries in front of you, right? That might not be a storm, but if 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 we could manage being obedient, just hearing the voice of God in those storms, we we can have joy because we'll know the same God who's guided us and led us all this time in our Christian walk, all this time provided for us, all this time made ways out of no way, all this time care for us will get us through, will give us the same instructions to get through that storm. Well, the, the joy comes from not where we're at in the moment, mm -hmm. but where we're going. Amen. And if you he said, keep your eyes on Christ, yeah. because he's pointing you beyond what you're going through. And I'll say this, you know, I'm excited about my future in God. You mm -hmm. should be excited about Amen. your future in God. I mean, in light of what you've been through, what you're going through now, based on what God has shown you and the fact that you must do it, I'm telling you, I keep using that term, lean into it. You know, give it your all, commit to it, and it will pay off. You, you can't have a half effort approach to the things of God. Mm -hmm. You can't. We were like that in the world. Mm -hmm. When we sold drugs, we sold drugs. When we got high, we got high. We, we were all in. And then we come into the kingdom, and we want to tip you toe around and be timid because oftentimes it's because we don't really believe what God said. If, 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 God, if, if God said, listen, I have a million dollars for you three years down the road, but you have to go through this and do things a certain way, and you would get it. If you really believed it, what would you do? You would go through it. it. But if you didn't believe it, you were like, look, yeah, I don't know about that. So it, it, it goes to our faith. And that's why I say confirmations are important because you can think you know something and not really know it, but once God confirms it, oh, it's a done deal. It's, it's a must happen, but it's also predicated on us coming into agreement with what God has said, doing things God's way, and it's going to happen. Hmm. Is there anybody, and I'm going to close out, anybody who has been waiting on God to do something for a long time? And it seems like it's just not happening. But you know you heard God say he was going to do it. Mm -hmm. See, it's not that we're waiting on God. It's oftentimes God waiting on us. Because there, there's still some sins and weights that's really slowing us down that we don't really realize. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit, thank God, he reveals things to us. He lets us know, hey, look, this is something you need to slow down. You used to probably not spend so much time with this person. I mean, uh, the Holy Spirit talks like that. Yeah. 
And sometimes we're not really sensitive to the spirit, but he's telling us, look here, this is what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And as we obey the Holy Spirit, he allows us to accelerate us being where we need to be. Amen. Even like with Paul, he will forewarn you of a storm. Amen. Something's about to happen. Anybody got a, a forewarn of a storm? You're about to go through some stuff, some about to jump off. The Holy Spirit warned you of it. But once again, you go through it with joy because it's not about what you're going through. It's what's on the other side of what you're going through. Any final thoughts? Hey, if you, if God has told you it's a storm, grab my umbrella. That's what I want to say. Make sure you prepare for it. I mean, you, not necessarily prepare for it, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm almost get your footing. Get your footing. Because you don't know which way that storm is going to take you, how topsy-turvy you might be, how difficult it, the impact of the storm might be, just kind of going through it. But get your footing and hold on, you know, and, and trust that if God is taking you through the storm, he'll bring us out. But, but like we talked For about. what you said. Let's talk about with, with Jonah, you know, Jonah came out because he surrendered to God. Absolutely. The prodigal son had his mind renewed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're going through a storm because we have not learned a lesson. Mm -hmm. We have not surrendered to God. Fully. And so when you surrender to God, you know, you, you now gain closer access to what God is saying. And, 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 and I'm, not, I'm harping on this because I just want so bad for the body of Christ, the kingdom of God, to advance. Yeah. For people to do the things that God said you must do because I understand that that's your place of blessings. But when you get to the place that you have fully leaned in to God's will for your life, that's the supernatural. Yes. That, that, that's when things must happen because when God says something and we come into agreement with it, there is nothing and nobody that can stop that. The only thing that can stop us is us. Mm -hmm. So when you come into agreement with God's will for your life, I mean supernatural favor, blessings, miracles, signs. I mean, stuff just start happening. Thank you, Lord. Because once again, all things are working together for your good because you have been called according to what? A purpose. When you align yourself with that purpose, that's when it gets fun. Yes, Lord. Come on. That's, listen, listen. That's when the kingdom gets fun. When you're working hand in hand with God and you see God moving and everything he said coming to pass. Now, you're still going through them storms, but now you see, you know what? There is some on the other side of this storm. So I'm going through now, but I still got joy because I know where I'm going. Come on, can you pray for the people? Absolutely. <clears throat> Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come tonight thanking and praising you, Lord God, <laughs> for our storms. We're asking that you would help us agree with you. Help us align ourselves, Lord God, such that as we go through, that we'll go through with joy, understanding what's on the other side of the storm. Lord God, we've been, um, some of us in this, in this Christian walk, in this journey for a long time, Lord God. And what I, what I can receive from Jesus is he, he has so much passion. For the, for the thing, the, the thing that was behind the storm, the thing that was on the other side called us, God. He, 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 he wanted to please you in such a way that he satisfied, completed the work, God. He was unwilling, unwilling to, to not go through. He was unwilling to, to not fight a fight, Lord God. Because it was something he knew you wanted from him. He knew, Lord God, that he had to complete the work. He knew that he must go through, Lord God. And you have called us. Lord God, you're calling us. You're pulling us out of spaces and places, Lord God. Giving us opportunities to come into agreement. Such that the storms, Lord God will eventually cease, Lord God, if we would decide that you're right and we're wrong. If we would decide, Lord God, that you created us and you knew who you were creating when you did it, that we were fearfully and wonderfully made 
So there's nothing about us, Lord God, that, that's so messed up that when you call us to do a thing, that we can't accomplish it. We, we haven't, haven't been so foul and, 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 and just treacherous that you won't use us. So God, if, if in our minds we can't conceptualize that we're worthy of being used by you because of something that we did, something that we said, some place we went, Lord God, help us understand and, and, and cause our minds to commit to the will and the word of God such that we will lift our hands and say, yes, God, for real, I'm going to go. I realize that this is something that I must do. God, and, I'm, and, we, and I know that if I must do it, that somehow, some way, you're going to lead me through the storm, around the storm. God, you can cause it to stop if I align my mind with your will, like you did for Jonah, God. Once he decided that you were right and he was wrong, he could complete the work. God, and sometimes that's what's standing in our way, us. For whatever reason, God, whatever we got going on internally, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, whatever we got going on, Lord God, that we have not decided that, that we have purpose and, and that there, you have a will, a perfect will for our lives. God, we want to line up with that and, and say, um, we will go through the storm, Lord God. If that's what we have to do, we realize we must get to where you're taking us. We must. Lives are dependent on it, God. Souls are dependent on it, God. Somebody's on the other side of that storm dependent on us to lean into it, to lean into it, to press but towards the mark of the high calling, Lord God, which is in Christ Jesus. I ask you, God, to give us the fortitude, the fortitude to press, the desire to press, the willingness to press. God, you're not forcing us to do anything. You've given us a free will. And, 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 and God, sometimes we, we just, just take that too far but if we can get to a space where we're willing to repent do a 180 regarding some things if we can get to a space God where we can realize that our past is what it is it's behind us and it can no longer hinder us unless we allow it to God if we can get our focus and our footing in a space where we can lean in and depend and trust you completely, God. We'll complete the task. We don't have to leave here prematurely, Lord God. We don't have to leave the work unfinished because you're with us. You never leave us or forsake us according to your word. So God, help us tonight say yes to your word. Help us resist the devil such that he'll flee. God, let us turn from our wicked ways. God, there's so many things that, that we could, could look at, we could look at, that we could do, that we can do in the natural, such that we can get ourselves in a space with you where we can, again, finish the work. I'm excited about it, God. I'm excited about it, God. I thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, Lord God. I thank you for keeping us and watching over us and protecting us, Lord God, while we've been stuck in the storm. I thank you for helping us understand on tonight that, yeah, lean in, lean in, and come on through the storm so we can come out on the other side with joy, with joy, according to your word, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so we can do this. We were called to do it. We must do it. And so let us come together and reason so we can get the work done. 
so it can go ahead and be finished so we can move on to the next thing that you have for us to do God I bless you Lord for uh, loving us so much loving us so much that you would just give us this word and break it down such that it's simple enough for us to um, execute it I bless you and I give you glory and honor for doing it in Jesus name amen 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 my questions are, as we close, what is the work that God call you to complete? I heard you take a deep breath. <laughs> what is the work that God has called you to complete? And I believe that we can know it, we can be sure about it, and we can do it. Amen. You know, because if you, if you don't know what that work is, ask for clarity. God, what is the work you've called me to do? Then ask God to give you a confirmation so you can be sure. Now, for those that know, the question is, have you leaned into it? You know what God wants you to do, but have you been giving it your all? Where have you been doing it sometimes? You know, well, I don't have a title. I don't have a platform. I don't have money. No, have you been doing what God's told you to do? I'm excited and I have a smile on my face because we know what God wants us to do. And, it, and, and it's so reassuring to know what it is and know that when it's done, you've done your assignment. And it's like, and when you're so close to it, I mean, it's what, it was keep you going. It keeps driving you because like, I got to get it done. I got to get it done. It is my prayer for every member of our church, for the body of Christ as a whole, to know the work they're supposed to be doing. There may be somebody watching right now who's not saved, who doesn't know Christ is your Lord and Savior. Now is your time, now is your opportunity. The Bible said the day you hear his voice, heart not your heart. If you would just open up, he will come in, he will sup with you. If you would just simply believe in your heart and confess your mouth to the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. God has a plan for your life. He wants to first of all save you, he wants to fill you with his Holy Spirit, and he has a purpose for your life. And his purpose is bigger than just you. As the woman of God said, God wants to use you not just to be blessed, but to be a blessing to other people. So with you not knowing Christ, you can't fulfill that purpose. So if you're watching on tonight and want to come to know Christ, you want your sins to be forgiven, you want to enter into your purpose, repeat this prayer after me. Father God, I admit that I'm a sinner. But I believe you sent your son to die for my sins. Come into my heart. Save me. Fill me with your spirit in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, you are now born again believer. The angels, excuse me, in heaven are rejoicing. You are now filled with the Holy Spirit. God wants to reveal to you your purpose, his plan for your life. And he wants you to join a church, a Bible believing Bible teaching church that he is leading you to. If God's called you to this church, you can join online by texting the number 773-455-0008. Text the word join. That's 773-455-0008. Text the word join. I hope you guys were blessed on tonight. And I'm looking, amen, I'm trying to see who's online watching. Thank and praise God for all of you who joined us online. I'm praying for the day that we'll all be able to articulate this is what God wants me to do. I know my purpose. I mean, that, that, that is the most fulfilling feeling to have to know for this reason I was born. I exist. He, who was that? He told, uh, for such a time as this, God has raised you up. I believe for such a time as this, God is using us in a mighty way. And I'm looking at L Lamar, and I just, I'm looking at his face, and it's like, he just wondered, you know, God, what is it? What is it? And God's going God's gonna to reveal it to you. And you know what? And we can't compare it to other people. Please. Because everybody's not going to be on a platform. Everybody's not going to be in front of a mega audience. It, 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 it's not going to be like that. It doesn't make you less It doesn't make you less than so we have to find out, God, why did you make me? Mm -hmm. Accept that, 
lean into it, and go through the storms, yes. amen. And have and, peace with it so that amen. you can walk in the joy that comes with fulfilling your purpose. I believe Jesus is sitting at the right hand like, mm -hmm, I did that. Yeah, but, but, but it wasn't easy. Mm -mm. It wasn't easy. Last thing is this. It's like with Jesus going, he, see, he didn't get joy when he came out. Mm -hmm. He had joy while he was in while it. While he was in it. While he was in it. But see, so when we're in it, that's not the time to get intoxicated. It's not the time to make dumb decision because that will cause you to lose sight of Christ and what he's, what he's taking you. You keep your eyes on Christ. But keep I've his done joy. For that. I have too. <laughs> I've done I have to. I don't. I don't. I don't have more time to waste doing I, that. I don't. That's what I'm saying. I, I've been there, done that, and I realize it's 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 a really unhealthy place. It's bondage. It's 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 the worst feeling in the world. But let me just really it's quick. I said world. we're done, but let me let me just normalize how difficult it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine hypothetically speaking, God showed you this about your life. You're okay. clear. You have confirmation. But you're just going through a really bad storm. Yeah. I mean, you know, relationship, finances, health. Yes. And the question is, God, you know, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Anybody experience that where it was like, God, man, hey, what is really man. going on? Yes. And you were on the verge of giving up, but God is faithful. I mean, yes. ju just before you give up, throw in the towel, God said, look here, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And so we, we dance and we shout, praise God. We love you, Jesus. We know you're good. Another storm comes. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to make it. God just brought you to the last storm. Mm -hmm. Remember the story about the three Hebrew boys? Yeah. And they were in the fiery furnace. And Nebuchadnezzar, he saw Jesus in the furnace mm -hmm. with them. You're not in the storm by not Jesus ever. in the storm with you. And he's going to bring you out. And you're going to come out greater than when you went in. Yeah, Let you me just, just stop so we can end tonight. Keep your joy. When you're going through the storm, and when you come through that one, let let that be the thing that causes you to understand when the next storm come. <laughs> I got through that one, and how I did it was with joy. I got through the storm with joy, understanding what was on the other side of the storm. Remind yourself so that when the next storm come, you won't get distracted. I mean, you probably did before the first storm, but after you get through one, you have to hold on to that hope and that faith and that joy that you know Jesus is in the storm with you. Well, the scripture says, count it all joy. Yeah. If you fall in diverse temptation, count it joy. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, man. Hey, Amen. We're not going to hold you guys much longer tonight. We thank you guys for joining us. Hope you guys meditate that on these scriptures. Hard saying. That, that's our saying. <laughs> Meditate on these scriptures, and God willing, we'll see you guys on Saturday. We love you. Enjoy the rest of your week. Good night.